I wanted for some time to build a edge pattern shifter interface which utilizes Fanatec's wheelbase internal protocol. Let's see how that went. Hi, I am Stuyo and this is my garage. You would wonder why I wanted to build such interface. Well, first of all I wanted to have one less USB device. Using the wheelbase internal protocol leads to hassle-free in-game configuration and should work on consoles as well. The brain of this project is a cheap microchip microcontroller. You will have to use a PIC programming device, but as you can see the K150 doesn't like our 20-pin body. As a workaround, I just bent the last 4 pins and was able to place it properly on the zero insertion force socket. As you can see here, when you select your microchip that you are programming, the software will automatically show you how to connect it. After you connect to the programmer on the correct COM port, you can read whatever is on the PIC microcontroller. You will get some errors, but this clearly shows that you are connecting to a clean microcontroller. Now that you verified it, you can safely program your microcontroller. Proceed by loading your firmware file. Now that the file is loaded, just click the program button and give your confirmation to proceed forward. You should see a reassuring loading bar showing the microchip's programming progress. In the end, you should get the mandatory confirmation dialog that everything went ok. If you are still in doubt, you can click the verify button so it compares the loaded firmware with whatever is currently programmed on the PIC microcontroller. Now when we have flushed the firmware on our microcontroller, we can proceed with our project. Remove the microchip from the ZIF socket and carefully straighten its pins. In this video we will not show you how to build the exact project board itself, you should figure this by yourself. After all soldering is done and the microchip is flushed, we insert it carefully in its socket. As you can see here, it is actually very easy to build and it doesn't have that many solder bridges. More information you will be able to find on the link provided down in the description. Also, you will be able to download files for 3D printing of an enclosure for the current configuration. We will also need a cable to connect to the wheelbase. On one side we will have a 6-pin connector and on the other side we will have the Fanatec utilized RG12 connector. The only thing left now is to actually connect the shifter to the interface adapter. The weapon of choice is our favorite BDH H1 Bazooka H pattern shifter. If you are curious to know why it's our favorite, you can watch the video review on this channel covering why it is there. The interface adapter has smaller footprint than a standard USB gamepad controller and it fits very nice in the provided enclosure. After we connect the interface cable, we are ready to assemble back the shifter. In doing so, be careful not to cut the shift cables. Let's connect the finished product to the wheelbase now and verify if everything is working properly. If you manage to achieve this project, you will see the shifter sign on the wheelbase when powered and you will be able to calibrate it properly in the Fanatec control panel. If everything went fine after calibration, you will be able to see the shifter working seamlessly with the wheelbase in the control panel. Congratulations, you managed to assemble a compatible aftermarket shifter utilizing the wheelbase's internal protocol. This was a fun little project which was easy to complete and doesn't cost much. It works flawlessly, shifts instantly and it's an elegant solution to integrate our aftermarket shifter with your Fanatec wheelbase. If you wonder why we built it, it's simply because we can, but on the other hand, it's an invaluable solution especially for console players. And now let us enjoy some native wheelbase shifting experience in our favorite Dirt Rally 2.0 game.
hope you enjoy building this project as much as we did. For now, have fun and see you next time.